Hello guys, this is Rotanks from the Full TCG. Today I will bring you a Tsukuyomi deck profile. I almost said Galahad. But uh, this is post the new set, so nothing changed since there was no new Oracle King Tank support. Uh, so Tsukuyomi, you have the Ryan Chain of course, so we'll start with that. You have the Grade Zero. All the Grade Zero does is start the ride phase, just like the Grade 1 and Grade 2. You check top 5 and ride the Grade Up version, so for the Grade 0 it's the Grade 1 it's Tsukuyomi, Grade 2 it's the... For Grade 1 you have to search out to Grade 2, Grade 2 you have to search out to Grade 3. Uh, and then instead of how it is in the TCG where you then organize it, organize the rest of the cards and put them to bottom of the deck, the game does that for you and does not give you the option, which makes this deck suffer a bit since you cannot start stacking from turn 1. Instead, you have to rely on other cards to stack. And then, as I said before, the Grade 1 and Grade 2 have the same skill where start of start of the ride phase, check top 5, run the Grade Up. And uh, they also have a secondary skill, which is Ren Riding Over... I think it's... I don't remember the skill exactly, but I think it's just Ren Riding Over the previous grade. So, Grade 1 runs over the Grade 0, Grade 2 over 1. You Soul Charge so for the Grade 1, it's... Right, when you're riding over to grade 3, you soul charge 1. Uh, for grade 2, it's when you're riding over to grade 1, soul charge 2. And then, grade 3, you get nothing like that. You have instead, when you have 6 or more soul, DB2, draw 2, uh, put one of those cards into your soul. So, as you can tell, the thing you want to be doing is using that to your advantage. And, uh making sure you get the right chain so you can use your main boss and your only 11k beater in the deck. So anyway, we'll start off with the rest of the great ones. You have your four PGs. I shouldn't need to explain why you need PGs. It's your only defensive option outside of damage uh, damage checking triggers and heals and intercepts, but like, those aren't reliable. This is somewhat reliable, but you still can't choose when you want to use it. You have three Kokua. Uh, on place, you check top and put it on top or bottom of, of deck. This helps you script your deck more. My deck's build themed around, themed around just scripting as much as possible. And then trying to draw into one of my two toms, as I don't have any more. And writing them. Then you have a uh, Y or whatever. I don't know the name of it. But on attack or boost, you are, if you have six more soul, you draw one and put one of your cards in hand at the bottom of there. So that's one of the scripting cards. Then you have grade twos. Here's another one of the scripting cards. It's again just like the grade one on attack. If you have six more soul, draw one, put the rest of the bottom, put one card from hand to the bottom. Uh, so you just put your triggers on the toilet bottom, uh, just filter out your hand for the boosters, grade ones, whatever you need during the situation. Next we have two 10Ks. Uh, you can run the tw the 9K that comes to 12K if you have six cards in soul. But I want to run this because it's a good defensive option if I cannot ride into Gigiomi since it's a 10K base. And it's also a good beater on the rear guards so that hits over great freeze and that. Well, most great trees in the game. And then next we have our two Silent Tom. When he attacks, your opponent's PG is unnullified. So he he just hits regardless of what happens, just knock out the intercepts and then Tom hits even if they have four PGs in hand. And then they need to get a heal. It's OTT's probably it's probably gonna be OTT's always win con in this game because of the anti-PG skill it has. They may try and uh, errata it, but I'm not sure how they will errata it like they did with Amber Dragons, so that was obvious, just make the cost more expensive, or make the cost more expensive for what it does, which is, instead of retire two, it retires one. Uh, but yeah, essentially they'll probably like make Tom ignore, ignore intercepts so they try to errata him. But that's at worst. I don't think he would. Anyway, we then have our red eyes or whatever. When his attack hits, soul charge one. This is your way of getting to our uh, six soul, or my way of getting to six soul since I don't have Amaterasu. 
I slapped last season and did not get it. I didn't even get Legend 10, because I was just slacking hard. And anyway, now we have the Great Freeze. We already went over Tsukiyomi. Uh, that's your crits. Uh, like every deck I use, I always run crits. Especially in this deck, since like stands, I see no value in. And draws, you already draw a lot, so why increase the, your deck out speed? So I run the Tsukiyomi as 4 crits, because if I get it, I have one less crit in deck, meaning I don't get PD'd more often. I don't know why I actually care about that, but I do. Uh, then we have your four heals, which is this chick. I forgot what she, uh, what her name is, like every other card I have in this deck. But on attack, six more soul, draw one, draw to one. That's all it is. Uh, that's just a heal, because like, what's your heal in this deck doesn't really matter as long as it's not your right chain, because you don't have any Galahad, I'm not going to have no Art uh, Rose or Dance Lock Coin in this deck to put back to deck. And then you have a uh, Big Robot Man. On hit, when he hits the Vanguard on Vanguard, you CB2 draw 2 and put 1 to bottom of deck and shuffle. On Rearguard, you CB2 draw 1 if you hit the Vanguard. Then we have Meteor Break Magician. If I had, uh, I think I didn't know, Amaterasu. If I had Amaterasu or Uriel, I would run them over him because they actually do some things. Uriel has that slight chance you might find a PG. And Amaterasu is your backup because she has a Mega Blast on here. And she also helps Soul Charge hit 6 if you didn't get the right channel. But that's all for the deck profile. Now we're headed up into the fights. Uh, again, same as usual, there's the three fights. And we try to see how many I can win in those three, back to back to back. This is Future Rotings, giving you the fights now. So we're just going to head into ranked. Uh, I was already on four win streak because uh, I tried to record some beforehand. It was two VP farmers, a Kagura that bricked very badly, and one decent file. And I'm not about giving you guys that sort of stuff. So here we are in an OT mirror match. Send five back, get an actually good hand. Never, never punished, boys. Never punished. Uh, we do whiff the grade one search, but that doesn't matter anymore since we have the grade one. Uh, and here I just call Cocoa to try and put some pressure on and maybe try and flip the crit early on. Because that's what I try to do once I know I have one grade three Sukiyomi guaranteed. It's just try and apply early game pressure to fast over the cat Tom. They missed their Tom Ride, so that's pretty bad. And uh, they just also go to apply some damage and some pressure. I'll take a list. I like that two damage already. We draw another grade two, but we get another grade two in the top five. Uh, that was a bit of a bad uh, soul charge there, but it doesn't matter. So we just call everything and wipe his board a bit and also deal some more damage. And we also flip a crit heal. Uh, that's what I wanted to see since uh, it pushes into high damage early on. Basically, just the high damage early on can really solidify if you win or not. Especially if they miss ride and have to do something like this where they have no interceptor. They do have a flip a crit, so we do go up by uh, two damage. We whiff a heal, uh, but I expect I expected whiff heals when I'm doing this sort of play. Uh, they do have two cards in hand now, so they may have enough to stop a tom, but we won't know until we actually attack. Uh, so we just, you know, use Suhi's skill to draw some more cards. We send uh, the Sugiyomi into decks and you don't need it. And we're just trying to just draw into some grade 2s to filter with. We get the grade 2 and we also have the grade 1 Sugiyomi to ensure that we can hit it. Just here we hope for no defensive. And there's no defensive. Then we just swing with Tom and it's game. That was a very simple win. And we also get to see a Legend 4 rank up. Uh, we're almost halfway to the one free riser because I plan on getting those to then play that deck and just zoom up in the rank. But uh, now we go into another fight and it's Kagero. I'll also try and fix the border issue because as you can see it's kind of cutting off some of the uh, video. But yeah, so our hand's not the greatest. But we do have a ride the grade one against another Amber Dragon player. I'm still surprised to see some people playing Gambus because I thought most people will leave it. Uh, and they also ride a PG, which is good for us. And they whiff. 
So next, uh, we do hit the grade two riots, that's good. Uh, the soul charges have it weren't that good, that's a kill and a draw, I believe. The feed's going, the video's going a bit too fast, but that's because it's about 30 minutes. So I've increased it by a fair bit. I'll check later, but a fair bit, and I'll probably edit it in by you guys. Anyway, so we do only push into one damage, and they got a defensive. Bit sad since our cooker was only a 6k and not a 7k. But they do get the grade 2, so if they have the grade 3 in hand, they will be on an 11k base. Uh, we also hit the grade 3 in a draw and also get it. And we're never riding that animated one man. The animated one's so cool, but we can't ride. Uh, we flip nothing, uh, but they down check another overlord, which I like. That means there's a less of a chance for our front row to get white with one at one unit. Uh, they do have a 12k however, which is annoying looking at my hand, since we have no way of our, what do I, no way of beating it over without having to call a PG or using meteor meteor break uh, magician or whatever his name is again. Uh, he does give us the third damage, which is what I wanted, because now I can actually do some plays. We we skip so because we don't need the another ride. We draw two intercepts, which is pretty good. And uh, I'm thinking, I think I throw out, yeah, I throw out the crit since we don't need that anymore. And just use our meteor break to hit the trigger, I mean, to hit through the intercept. And now this one, I hope for a trigger to then get the power to my rear guard and smack over theirs to try and at least like even it out a bit. Because it really hurts to uh, use that one CB, just hit over a 12k. And to also have no grade ones yet to boost through, since I don't want to call down PGs for normal reasons. However, they do have a dry, uh, dry track, and we do get the defensive, which is not what I was looking for. But we do also top deck a Kokoa, which is pretty good. So I'm just thinking, how do I want to call stuff out? And uh, this is how I do it. There's no trigger with the Kokoa, so it's against in the bottom of the deck. I haven't stacked it, so I haven't been paying attention. I'm just really just blindly hoping for crits and that. We get nothing, however, it's, so the deck's pretty thin. And we also have four PGs in hand, so we're super fine. Even if they did get a third damage there, I think it would be fine if they had Overlord. And they only call one intercept, and I think this is why we really win this game, since they only had one intercept to call in this turn. Uh, there is the 10k interceptor. And they do wipe a whole field, so it is a yike. We do draw two, however, and it's pretty good draw. So I think we send a heal, a minion PG. Oh no, grade one, because one of their green need to call one PG to make numbers hit. So that's what we do. And now we swing and hope for def no defensive on their side, but we get the trigger to hit over the defensive anyway. And now I go back to our stack in the deck. We do draw into the last two heals however, which is a bit of a yike. So I had to send on the bottom of the deck and now hope that my three PGs will be enough to survive me to kill them, my opponent. In which this probably will, since he had to call another grade three to the front rank instead of a grade two. They do draw however, which means they could have drawn into a PG, which may let them live this turn. But I, I wouldn't be able to know. Uh, we do get another Kogawa. How do I do this play again? So I call the grade 3 in front of the PG, I think. No, I do this first to try for trigger. Then I check how much I have left. I don't have enough. Since the heal that's uh, the second last card on the bottom, isn't it? And I also BM a final turn, because why not? So just swing. I really should have swung Vanguard first in order to be like... Uh, wait, it would have mattered, actually, no. Because if I swung Vanguard first, there was no trigger for me to get to... Uh, hit over the hill. So they got a hill, they got a hill, and probably could have won. So that's two wins out of three, uh, two right now. And now we're facing a Bermuda Triangle player going second. Uh, we see them to be a uh, Riviere lover. So, yep, they run Riviere starter. Uh, they get the grade one and hit the grade two, which is pretty good. Our hand is also pretty good. Uh, two PGs, we're just missing the grade 2 Tsukiyomi. Uh, we get the draw, and there's the grade 2 Tsukiyomi, it's the grade 1, which is a bit of a yikes. But I believe we still find a way to do this one. 
they run to grade two because they had it a uh, grade one. They draw one. They call down 10k vanilla, which is a bit annoying. They do get a heal. So their Fangar can't hit, but that is a wasted heal. Uh, we do hit the grade two, and we also drew into one, so we're fine either way. That was, again, a yikes of a soul charge. But I think at this point, like, don't matter. I'm like, I want the secrets. And we see the crit. And since, like, there's no point of putting anywhere, I just click on the dice button, because why not? You, you get some random shit happening there. Uh, let's see, they ride the grade 3. They also got d double defensive net last time, which is pretty good. Uh, they also have their own, like, Black Kitty, which I was surprised about. And I was like, wait, is that only an OTT card? But no. And they run stands. I've, and that's a key point I forgot. Like, the mood of stands is actually scary, in my opinion. Since it makes Reindeer more than just a Worcestershire or a Kaiser, since you flip the stand, you stand the booster and give the booster power, and then you call uh, the 10k, which uh, the Great Fruit, which does stuff in its bounce. So, like, but I actually gave Mudo a bit of shit, but it's actually pretty good, and our turn this turn is actually pretty good as well. I do just go ahead and use the skill, kind of like, might as well see what I draw into, and I did draw into 10k, which I kind of wanted to keep. But there's no, like, call over to grade 2, but there's no point. We do see no triggers, though, and they see no defensive. So it's all good in the hood, and we just keep stacking. Because uh, right now, that's my goal. Just make sure there's a decent stack of heals there, which I think there is. Uh, there's another dark cat. We're up, up to our uh, 8 cards. So they could really just lay it down on us with a uh, disc discard train. Uh, and that's something I f that I was a bit scared of first thing, which is the whole deck out build that people run with Bermuda, with that grade one. Because if I first start, I'm I'm dead since they can just make me draw like five in one turn. So I don't want that to happen, and thankfully they're not that type of player. And just to make sure I can hit 16k. Uh, no, why did I do that? I can't even hit over. That was a dumb play. Oh no, I think it was for the extra line of defense. Because I was expecting not to kill the Boomer Boom players. So it's like, call over to grade 2 to our... Uh, I mean, call over to Kokobo to grade 2 to ensure that it has some line of play. And they get the defensive. I should have attacked Vanguard first in that scenario. Try and flip a trigger. That way I know if I can hit over the Vanguard. That way I don't waste an attack and give them that grade 3 to bounce. They call no grade 2, however, which gives us, like, knowledge of, hey, we can kill them super easy if they don't have grade 2s. They do flip a stand, however, but we will be fucked if we didn't have 3 PGs in hand. So, we're fine. They did get a stand, however, that would have scared me a lot if I, if it was early on in the game, so it would have pushed me to higher damage. But, uh, there's no, no real thing to worry about. We call this that because, of, like, if they do manage to heal... Because now I give them the option to heal at 5 or 6. They could have, but they don't, and uh, it's just game from here. Uh, stack heal. No, double PG. But it is game from here, because we do have two PGs in a grade 2 for them to knock over. Their best bet would be to ride Ruby, not Ruby, a Pacifica. And then use Pacifica if they could manage the soul. But they're on free soul, so I don't think they could manage it. If they could otherwise, I believe they could have been able to win since they only needed to hit over 16 uh, three times, including uh, hitting it once. So that's four out of the six attacks that have to hit the Vanguard. And they have five attacks to hit the Vanguard with. So yeah, they could have really easily killed me, but they didn't because they don't probably...